Bienvenidos, Ushamdeed, and welcome to this Netacad Introduction to Python course supplemental video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking another look at lab 5.1.9.18, where we're going to be creating our own split function. Now, I've done a previous version of this video, and I used the split function inside of the my split function because my reading of this activity, if we come back to the activity, nowhere in here does it say that you can't actually use split in the function my split. And so that was my original solution. And a number of people enjoyed that, although I received some feedback of people saying that that really wasn't the spirit of the activity and that you should not be using split, that it wouldn't make any sense. Now, again, um, I don't want to say that it was kind of tongue in cheek as I was reading this, but again, as I read through it, it never said in here not to use split. But I totally understand that you may think that that was kind of taking a shortcut and might not have been the accurate solution. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two new ways to solve this problem, both of them using a single line of code in the MySplit function, and neither of those solutions uses the split function. And so to do this, we're going to be using regular expressions. And so to do that, I want to introduce you to the regular expression how-to in the 391 documentation here on the Python site. Now, Regular expressions, and you'll notice they're also called regexes or regex patterns, which is just basically a way to say regular expressions. And here in Python, we refer to them as re's as well because we need to import the re module. And so it's going to be that re module that gives us access to different methods inside of the module that allow us and facilitate the matching of characters. So let's come down here just a little bit and you can see that they talk about matching uh, simple, um, simple strings, right? Or simple matches. And so the match that we're interested in here, remember they're talking about in this activity, the activity says that we should take an argument, return a list and uh, of the words created from the string, divided in the places where the string contains white space. In other words, we don't want to match the white space. We simply want to match the words. And that would include punctuation. Remember here, we've got that B comma that with no space between these two. And so that would be returned as a contiguous string of characters in the list. So now if I come back over here to the regular expressions and we look at, we can match any decimal digit, any non-digit, match white space. Well, we don't want to match the white space. We want to match non-white space characters. And so you can see we've got this backslash S here when used with the regular expression module and one of the methods will help us find all of the matches of non-white space characters. And I just kind of gave away the name of the method there. It's going to be find all. And you can see here, performing matches. Once you have an object representing a compiled regular expression, what do you do with it? Well, we can try to match things in it. And so find all is going to find all substrings where the regular expression matches and look at how convenient this is and returns them as a list. Isn't that exactly what this activity is asking us to do? So we're going to find all substrings where the regular expression matches. Now remember, we talked about the backslash capital S as being the match. Now we're missing one additional character, but let's run this 
right here because we only need a single line of code and let's run it with what we've kind of talked about so far. Well, the first thing we want to do is import the RE module. And then we're going to space in four spaces. And I'm simply going to return the regular expression that I get back. I'm sorry, that I'm matching here when I say find all. And it's going to be backslash capital S. And I'm going to, we have a mistake here, but stay with me for a moment. So backslash capital S. Remember that says match all non-white space characters and S-T-R-N-G. And we're using, or I should say we're doing this against the positional parameter string or S-T-R-N-G, which represents each of these strings that is getting sent in as an argument right? And they become positional parameters in here, and it's S-T-R-N-G. So let's run this, and let's see what this returns. Now, you can see what happened here. It was matching each and every individual non-white space character. And again, if we go back to the regular expression, and we go back to that backslash S, which wasn't too far away here, it matches any non white space character. So it's matching each of them one at a time, every single individual letter and every single instance of any kind of punctuation. So anything that is not white space. Now, this is where the power of regular expressions come into play, because as you can see, We've got the right characters, the right letters, but what we don't have, and ABC, this is probably the easiest one to look at, what we don't have is it's not returning the characters that are next to each other, not separated by white space. In other words, it didn't return ABC as we see it here, surrounded, as you can see, by white space and it didn't return T-O, it returned the T by itself, and then the O by itself, skip the space, and then the B by itself, so we're close, right? So, what can I do to this regular expression right here to tell it to keep matching, right? So remember, the find all is it's gonna go through, and the backslash S says in whatever the value is I've passed in here, string, for that string, go through and match character after character, but I want you to match them together if they're next to each other, not separated by white space. And for that, we're going to come over to the regular expression operations. And let's scroll down a little bit here, and you can see we've got some special characters. Now, these special characters have special meaning when used with those regular expression backslash, uh, the backslash um, letter sequences. And so when we look in here, we might think, all right, causes the resulting regular expression to match zero or more. And we don't want that because they give you an explanation as to what zero or more actually means. It's gonna match the A and maybe if there is a B, it'll match it, and it'll match a thousand Bs or a million Bs, but if there's no B there, it's only gonna match the A. So let's put the asterisk in, and let's see what that produces. Maybe that's what we're after. And again, it's zero or more, meaning it doesn't have to match what we're asking it the immediately preceding match we're asking it to make. And that could be a problem. So let's clear the screen here and let's hit play. All right, well, take a look at what we've got. We've got two, but then we've got like the uh, quote, quote here. We've got B and then we've got the single tick, single tick. And so this is not what we're looking for. It's matching the spaces, as you can see, because again, it's matching zero or more, meaning it's either matching the string, or I should say each of the words in the string that we're looking for, or it's not, 
meaning it's going to match the spaces. And so that's where that zero or more is not going to work. And so we'll go back to the drawing board here and let's take a look at some of these other possible matches. What about the question mark? Causes the RE to match zero or one repetitions. And so again, you can see A, B question mark and meaning the preceding character, which is that B followed by the question mark means if the B's not there, okay, that's cool. We'll go ahead and still match with the A, but if there's one B, we'll match it. If there's two Bs, we're not gonna match it. And what would that look like here? So let's change that special character to the question mark. And what do you think's gonna happen? Well, let's go ahead and see here. Is it gonna match the spaces? Well, take a look at what it did. It matched the first character, which was this uppercase T, but then it stops here. Find all stops because it says if it doesn't repeat, right, match zero or more, and then it goes on to the next character and then the space. And that again is not the zero match is what's killing us here. So we need something that's going to match at least one of the preceding character. And let's take a look at the plus sign. Causes the resulting regular expression to match one or more repetitions of the preceding RE. And so the preceding RE, which is that right there, says a non-white space character. So match at least one or more non-white space characters, not zero or more. It's the zero that was killing us there. And so take a look. So here we go. A, B plus will match A by itself if it's a single letter, followed by any non-zero number of Bs, meaning any non-zero number of non-white space characters. And that is exactly what we're looking for. It will not match just A. Again, any non-zero number of Bs, but there has to be a B, right? We need that B to match, uh, or I should say, we need the, or the option here to match one or more, but not zero. And that is what the plus sign gives us. That's why it will match A, right? It'll match the A followed by any number of non-zero Bs. It will not match just the A. So we need the A and then we need some other non-space, uh, a uh, non-white space character. And so when we hit white space, then we just go on to the next string that we're trying to match of non-zero uh, of A non-white space character followed by one or more non-white space characters. And so let's go ahead and come back over to our example here. And let's go ahead, we've got the plus sign in there, let's clear our screen and let's run this program. And does it do what we asked it to do? Let's check, to be or not to be, that is the question. Uh, everything looks good there. Again, here it kind of goes off the screen as you can see and then to be or not to be comma, right? And this is the test, this is the big test here, excuse me, in the middle, and that looks good. Then we've got the empty list. We've got the ABC, right? And it skipped over the white space characters because we're looking for non, one or more non-white space characters. And then we have this other empty list. So here is another way in a single line that you can solve this problem. So there's the code. Now, let's go back to the backslash S because we wanna show you another way to do this. Now, the backslash capital S, that's how you could, that's how I would solve it, right? Now, you can see this is equivalent to the class and then it gives us this set right here with the caret. Now the caret when it's not inside of a set, and the set is inside the brackets, that's why I'm saying set, right? These brackets on the outside here, they don't represent a list with respect to regular expressions. It's referred to as a set. 
when this carrot, which typically represents the beginning of a line, when that carrot is inside of a set, it means not what is in the set. In other words, match, do not match what is in this set. In fact, I think if I come down a little bit further, there should be an example of that carrot inside of the set. And again, I'm just trying to show you that that's exactly what it means. You'll see that that's what it means. Um, but I thought they had maybe an example down here. So they don't, but that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, instead of saying backslash S, the other way to do this is say, don't match a space, a tab, a new, oops, sorry, a new line, backslash R, I can't remember what that is, or the F or the V, a form feed. So don't match any of these characters, or I shouldn't say characters, but these white space um, initiators, right? Because a tab would be white space, a new line is going to be uh, white space. And so we're saying don't match any of that. And so the equivalent in the negative sense of backslash capital S is that string right there. So let's plug that in and let's see if that works. Now we need to be careful here because remember we had the backslash S, but now we're going to be getting rid of that. We're not using the backslash S, we're using the set. And we're saying don't match the space, don't match backslash T the tab, backslash in the new line, backslash R, backslash F, backslash V, any of those characters which would result in white space. But we wanna leave the plus sign on there, right? Because we're saying one or more. We wanna to continue to match characters that are not white space with the plus sign. And again, we flip back to the plus sign, causes the, re the resulting RE to match one or more of the preceding, meaning it has to match at least one or else it's gonna think it's white space. So let's run this and let's see if that does what we think it's going to do. All right, and here we go. And take a look, what do you think? I think it looks pretty good. We even captured the B comma that with no space in between either of those. All right, so again, I would attack it with the backslash capital S plus sign, and that would be the best way to go about it. This is a little obtuse in terms of making it overly complex when we could have gotten away with simply backslash capital S, let's click run, and there we go. All right, well, hopefully, this is more along the lines of what you might have been expecting in terms of a solution for lab 5.1.9.18. We created our own my split function that mimics the split function that is part of Python. And we used regular expressions. We learned a little bit about regular expressions and we saw two different ways that we could attack this with regular expressions. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna to continue to get to work on these videos here and try to wrap up all of the Python labs that are part of the second half of the course. I hope you enjoyed this solution. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.